Peace, everybody. I hope everybody is having a blessed day or evening. Remember, any day that you're above the ground is a blessed day. Any day that you can wake up healthy and vibrant and strong and able is a blessed day. It's a balanced day. So I want to address um, a subject. The subject of what is the balance between feminine and masculine energy. We talk about this a lot. And somebody asked the other day, what is, what is that? What is the balance between feminine and masculine energy? So I want to take a jab at it as I share some remarks that I wrote down. Uh, please bear with me as I read. Um, but hang in there because I really try to tie everything in together. Um, so balance is order and order equals pattern. Okay, balance is order and order equals pattern. So in order for life to exist, the universe must provide order. And within that order is balance. Thus, we have the explanation of the square and compasses. Okay. Now, I'm going to tie all this together. When these two hemispheres of the unseen world have intercourse, the male and the female energies, when they have intercourse, the result and manifestation of that process equals order. Okay. And within that order is balance, which provides the means through which that thing might exist. The perfect balance for existence. So Christ in the esoteric language is often referred to as the higher self, right? But for this video, we will think of Christ as the manifestation of God in whatever form he shall present himself, regardless of whether that is in the form of a rock, a tree, or a human being. Christ will be the symbol of of that thing. So there's a chapter in the Book of Mormon that actually alludes to this point quite well. In chapter 15 from the Book of Mosiah, it states that, quote, God himself shall come down among the children of men, end quote. So here we have a symbolic story explaining to us that Christ is God in physical form. In other words, Christ is the symbol of matter, physical form, the knowable element, even thought, because thought is knowable. Thought is the offspring of your left and right hemispheres, your male and female mental hemispheres. The next verse elaborates on this slightly more. It states that, quote, and because he dwelleth in the flesh, he shall be called the Son of God, end quote. So, you see, all we have here is an awareness of these two realms of existence. This verse is just explaining to us that these two realms of existence exist. The knowable and the unknowable. And we're being told... That that which comes into the knowable realm is the offspring of God. In fact, as we read further, we realize that both the knowable and the unknowable are one and the same to he who has eyes to see and he who has ears to hear. So, in verse 3 it states that, Christ is referred to as the Father, quote, because he was conceived by the power of God, and the Son because of the flesh, thus becoming the Father and the Son, end quote. So, here we have a great mystery that's being revealed to anybody who's ready to receive it. Now, in the Bible, power is referred to as a spirit. 
just as love and many other uh, attributes are referred to as spirits in the Bible. So, power in this verse, he was conceived by the power of God, is reference to an active energy, a masculine attribute of the universe. And keep in mind that the universe is merely a macro version of our micro selves. So, these same attributes that exist within the universe also exist within us. The male and female attributes with all their many accompanying qualities. And just as the universe is the mind of God from which all creation comes from, our minds are also the source from which all of our creations come from. So, as stated before, we are only a reflection of many other reflections. As above, so below. As within, so without. And so it is eternal and is never ending. Now, Verse 4 really cuts to the middle of the meat in this chapter in regards to self-knowledge. Once you understand this verse for its esoteric meaning, you will have received the message of God's self. Quote, And they are one God, yea, they, the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth. End quote. Okay, they are one God, it says. So, to explain this verse better, I would like to conclude with an explanation of the Masonic square and compasses. So, to the esoterically uninitiated, the square and compasses are merely working tools used for building literal structures. But to the esoteric mind, a grand symbol of the self is revealed. For the intention of this video, imagine the compasses and square as a symbol of heaven and earth. The compasses is a tool meant to create circles. Circles, in turn, are symbolic of that which is eternal. A circle has no beginning nor end. That which is spiritual, heavenly, and is intentionally placed above the square. Now the square, on the other hand, is symbolic of that which is earthly, materialistic, physical, and points down, while the compasses points up in reference to the old adage, as above, so below. So, when you see the Masonic square and compass, one's pointing up and one's pointing down. As above, so below. And so, in this symbol, we find the symbolic replica of man, woman, and child, as they possess their spiritual eternal natures, encompassed by a shell of physical matter, combining heaven and earth, thus becoming the grand mediator. So, there's one last key element left to the symbol of the square and the compasses. And that is the G in the center of the compasses and square. The G is in reference to God or geometry. And once you have a, a true understanding, you realize that they're both one and the same. And... Through observation of this symbol, the Masonic logo, we realize that God is within that which is both spiritual and physical, as it is in the center of all things. It sees all, it hears all, it knows all, for it is within and without all. Nothing escapes its presence. It is the father of all. So, what do we learn from the symbol of the square and compasses? Simple. I'll tie it in a pretty little bow for you. 
Among many other things, we learn that God is within all things, all elements of both heaven and earth, and that in fact all is God. When you realize that God is all, and all is God, then you understand that indeed you are God as well, and can thus confidently proclaim to the world that I and my Father are one, for he abideth in me, and I in him. And whosoever drinketh from this cup shall not perish, but shall inherit eternal life. So mote it be.